everyone and welcome at the title Tuesday. I'm a Women Green Master Kedita Zalashvili and I'll be the host for today. Uh, we are having such a big news from February. Uh, we're going to have different um, format and different price funds. So very quickly, let's take a look uh, at what's going to happen. So we're going to have a double fund. Just players going to have double tournaments. Two events one event will start um, in the morning uh, and second tournament will start the afternoon and the time is adjusted to the players in europe in america and also in india so everyone can can simply join at whatever time it's comfortable for them and play title tuesday and for spectators this is double fun uh the price fund is also um different as you can see the total price fund will be two hundred fifty thousand dollars for uh one year and per week that's going to be five thousand dollars will be divided into two events so a lot of uh, fun is ahead of us but today this is still the old format we're still having the old format and let me very quickly take you through the um price fund for this event so we do have 1600 dollars price fund today the winner will get 750 dollars second place will get 400 dollars third place will get 150 dollars uh there is also a price for um fourth place also best female chess player and best streamer so um i have i have seen lots of streamers uh just starting the stream right now and i can also see the games have been started so let's focus now on the games and uh, after the first round i will just very quickly tell you the format so all of you knows that the time control here is three plus uh one and usually this is a lot of fun and warm greetings to our lovely chat and chess community on youtube uh, channel and also on twitch channel and um i hope that we're gonna have a great uh, fun today all of us together so i will be focused uh one round one player and when the game is ending or it's a bit boring then i will switch to the other one uh and um i have followed in advance several players that i know they are playing already but if you know that someone else is someone i don't know superstar joins us just let me know in the chat i'll read it out and uh, i'll quickly go and take a look at that all right let's now focus on the uh chess game here we have a first game of pikaru nakamura the uh, favorite of the event and the winner of most of the events he's playing now with the black pieces and here we have the uh position with uh seems like seems like benoni structure the bishop looks like benoni bishop and the pawn on c5 um just tells me that it's benoni so black managed to push b pawn forward and open up the b file um i don't know how this pawn got in here like which move white played h4 but usually this pawn is on h2 and the pawn is on e4 uh so white's idea is to uh, control the center push the pawns in the center break through the center with e4 e5 open up the g2 bishop because this diagonal is very important for white um and just to just to play very active chess so i i'm not sure about this h4 pawn like is it a attack sort of thing no i don't believe maybe it just it just happened to be um all right all right this is gonna be a very interesting game i believe because usually the um benoni defense is is quite interesting um opening especially in the blitz formats um so uh, yeah black black seems to be it's just slightly better like feels that black has better position here long diagonal bishop controls from g7 uh, square all these uh, squares up to a1 uh, b file is open and black just occupied this with a rook uh, and all the pieces are well developed white also has okay position like white is not really uh, showing too much of the ambitious here like 
you know i'm with white i want to win um but white is just um playing some normal moves knight a4 now bishop a5 is a is a threat so black has to take this knight get rid of this uh piece and now what's what black is doing um black will try to control b file so white has the edge of curved bishop but it's not really visible here as um as the position is uh not that open like if white tries to open up a little bit with e4 e5 i'm so co so so uh, much into this plan uh then um white might have a slightly better position slight maybe just a, just a just a little bit better because of the pair of bishop all right so uh b3 is a weakness for white a6 is a weakness for the black and whoever wins the weakness will have chance to win here hello hello everyone um uh, happy happy to be here and uh soon we will be joined even more people i hope uh so and we're gonna have a lot of fun at two days title tuesday finally we have we have e4 but black plays bishop d4 uh hikaru wants to have this very active bishop and maybe that knight goes on e5 to just to dominate on the dark squares uh so hard to find the uh, winning plan here i think i think both players have to just move around uh try to uh look for some weaknesses and then uh, play on the time too all right that time is very important here i just noticed that black has a lot of time on the clock black has a lot of time one minute and 40 seconds and white has only 20 seconds one second increment is not big deal and if you have really heavy position then it can be hard to defend so uh, black managed to open up the position and now uh the queen is very active black's queen is very active maybe 97 95 can be an idea uh white will try to stop that happening bishop e3 was played and 95 knight comes with a tempo here queen is hanging so uh black is winning here something black surely wins here something queen b1 i like that move queen e4 now queen e4 and black one upon now queen captures the bishop and knight seems to be just a perfect piece here Knight comes on c5 stops uh black to come on e4 uh, with the king and in in any case like now d3 seems the move but the one of the one of the best rules in in the end game is just to activate the king because king is a uh, very strong piece d3 now was a beautiful sacrifice why denied it and uh, because it was losing a piece but anyway white lost that piece so that was the game and black managed to win let me very quickly go to the other game uh so we still have some of the peoples uh in the in the in the business we have ginger gm everybody's favorite uh ginger gm here with black pieces and he's not having fun he's not having fun uh as you can see the the evaluation bar says that white has a uh, better position fida master from brazil is doing really good um time here is very important components they don't have much of the time so they have to uh white has to play very accurate uh and very fast as well so how about d5 king d4 uh but no he's going to try to collect other pawns too maybe rook h7 now activate the rook h pawn is a pass pawn uh what goes for another pawn this 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 guy is strong this guy is strong he denied to capture on g4 i'm not i'm not convinced with the idea of bishop being on a8 although it was only one move and now rook can go on b8 and b7 to take another pawn perfect yes that's 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 just a very good plan for um white 97 seems to be on uh, the pre-move and white has how many pawns three extra pawns that's that's enough that's really enough to um convert this even against quite strong green master when you are a feeder master 
So here we have a little bit of changes. Black tried to collect some of the pawns, but there are a lot of pawns still. This check, this check was necessary actually. This check was so important. Otherwise, Black could sacrifice a rook and uh, Black's king was in the stalemate. So very nicely played. And here white has an extra queen and it's just not much happening here. It will be a checkmate pretty soon. Queen takes f3 was a better move, but yeah. So you have here and a resignation. That's quite a uh, quite upset. All the games has been ended as I can see here. Uh, let me go into the uh oh alright, so we do have here um Chascom streamer, Namska playing against Alex Papasi Marco Polus, a uh, great player I assume. And the game ended oh beautifully checkmated with G4. That happened while I was pronouncing the last name. So uh let's go to the next game. So here we have draw. Yeah this ended in a draw and one last game. Alright the rook game here we have. All right. Also, we do we had we had both streamers playing against each other in the first round, as the chat on Twitch uh, says. Uh, how about to see the game of um, Badru Jaba, exotic princess? Uh, he is uh, with black pieces, and here we have Karkan defense. Uh, he's playing against international master from Russia, I assume. Uh, and here we have one of the one of the sidelines of Karkan defense. Look at this funny pawn structures of a structure of uh, black. This can be good. It can be bad. I don't know. We will figure it out. What happens? And now he's trading dark square bishop. I'm not sure what he's doing. I hope he knows what he's doing. I hope he knows what he's doing. Whenever you put the pawns on the light square, you 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 would like to keep the bishop on the dark square. But he plays so fast, he still has three minutes on the clock, so probably he knows the theory. Maybe it's sort of his setup. Uh, so let's let's check it out. Knight, two knights uh, versus bishop and the knight. And uh, here we have here we have queens off the board. So uh, we're gonna have an end game and uh, black needs to bring this knight knight into the game from h6 on h6, not doing too much. So knight f5 was played really fast quickly from black and black has double pawns on f5 and f7 also h5 uh, pawn is just um isolated so not isolated <laughs> it's not isolated it was just weak and uh exotic princess just pushed it to trade and white decided not to trade it now h4 pawn is 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 a fast pawn and can be a really strong pawn uh black goes with rook g8 attacking on g4 uh if if white goes with g5 that will uh really weaken the pawns on the king side so he's not going for that and instead bishop h3 that's quite a passive move but on the other hand it stops pawn going uh forward and also uh guard g4 pawn so not so bad uh, and now we have another interesting plan black is trying to maneuver a little bit on the queen side rook on a8 a6 and now b6 probably goes on b4 next move and black can also push b5 uh, if if that's ne necessary and I think it's it's pretty much necessary at some point. We might see also some uh, maneuvering with the knight maybe here here. Now he goes with f6. He goes with f6 um, and now white yeah white has very nice plan just to play rook h1 and capture h4 pawn so here Black has to use some time and he goes with e5. Nice. I like this move. Uh, I like this move. This uh, e5 just counts g4 pawn. So if I takes the pawn, then rook can take on g4. So after rook e1, black, I think, just won a pawn. Yeah, black simply won a pawn. Another pawn is gone. And this is uh, clearly the winning position for black. All the pieces are very active. King is in the center. King can come on d6 or on e6 um, and uh, at some point black can start to push the pawns d4 or e4 
B5 is still there. I'm not sure if that's what Black wants, but yeah, he wants that. He wants that. He 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 just played it, and he's going to create another pass pass pawn here. So we're gonna have uh, pass pawns on the sides. That's very good, and it's quite a good strategy to have passers on the long long distance, so the opponent cannot quickly manage to um, uh, replace the pieces. So White Star tries to stuck with h4 pawn but you know what black can give that pawn back because black had two extra pawns now black remains with one extra pawn and still the past pawn is on the board so how white has to stop it there is one one idea like this but this is quite passive maybe white has to try something else but yeah that seems like not another option so what what Joby will try now to do is king to get on b2. That's that's a dreamy plan. Uh, another thing is that knight can be activated somehow. Um, knight needs to get tricky. Maybe here here he's trading a lot of pieces, and the rook is hanging here. He has to move this rook. <laughs> rook a7. Rook a7. I have a feeling that while well, white will be six times soon. All the pieces are so much squeezed. All right, all right. Knight c3, perfectly placed. Um, well, if, if, white, if white captures this pawn, black can simply trade everything and get this pawn. So the pawn in the game is winning. So for instance, now, Bishop takes a2 is bad because rook h2 wins a piece. Um, but yeah, oh, that's that's a very strong move. Now this is a threat, and then white can't hold that position. Knight check, knight can come here. But it's not really necessary because white is losing c2, c2 bishop. Yeah, white is losing this. King has to go on a1 or just to capture this pawn. If king goes on c1, black will promote the pawn. So we might have, we might see here resignation soon. Uh, and meanwhile, I will just check some interesting games. We do have one very interesting game. Uh, and this seems uh, very interesting because. My first thought was like white has very good position as the king is exposed, but the the evil bar says that black has black has winning situation plus two minus two minus two. So that's an extra knight over here, and seems like white is black is going to get another piece. Not now as the rook is hanging. And uh, yes. There, there are too many pieces for black uh, in guarding the king. All those pieces are guarding the king. And white has only bishop and the queen wrongly placed to attack the king. So, yeah, it seems like um, Jasper is going to get this point. Three seconds for, for white. Yeah, white is also struggling on the time. So knight g3. Oh, knight e3. Okay, that's 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 better. Not too much dramas. And now we can just take any any of those rooks, just like that. And and you can take queen f4. You can take queen f4 to 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 look fancy. But that's the way how uh, black is winning. We do have one um, remaining game. So here we have another grumpy against polite pol polite play <laughs> polite player. Um, and here we have knight c7. White uh, has extra piece, and uh, what has a winning position? White will uh, very easily convert this. Now just capture the pawn here, and then this pawn. There we go. This is something that White has to uh, look look after. 
uh, but that's yeah, what white is doing right now. White is getting closer to the pawn. Okay. Okay, this pawn and game is still winning because there's two there's two extra pawns. Uh and yeah, it's it's enough. It's enough. Uh, all right, this game has been ended and let me check very quickly if we have something else. This game has already ended too. So we are looking forward to the uh, to the um, third round to start. For now, I see that 542 players are playing this tournament. So this is really awesome to see so many players gathering here. And from February, we're going to have, I think, even more players. Um, joining because um, this time uh, time tournament um, schedule is not proper for the Indian players for instance because it's quite late there so uh, we're gonna have two tournaments and uh, from next month actually from a few days um, I think we just have we just have some some time and we can take a look at this that's what we were talking about from February 1st. We're going to have two events and starting one in the morning, then in the afternoon. And all those players from America, from Europe and from India are going to have a chance to take a part. Uh, some of them can also play two of them or just pick one which suits the best. And this actually means that chess fans uh, and supporters are going to have double fun and you guys can also see the uh price fund five thousand dollars is the weekly price that's divided into two tournaments and um overall 250 hundred uh thousand dollar is the uh price fund is the i don't see the games yet starting um yeah because some of them are still in progress right yeah some of them might be still in progress and here we have the next round all right um any suggestions which game should be focused on i would i would go with uh uh alexander bortnik who is very good um very good uh, blitz player and he's really fast and um he shows us some of the drama so that's what we want to see all right, here we have uh, the Rui Lopez, but black just pushed b5, bishop has to come on b3, black will now develop the king side, make just some castle, uh, before that he goes with h6 to avoid bishop coming on g5, this should be heavily the theory, um, and seems like white is thinking to castle or not to castle what else can he play bishop b3 can he can play he can also play uh h3 to avoid bishop g2 or knight g2 or knight g4 he goes with bishop e3 uh now black has to make a decision and he takes the bishop and here we have the uh position where white has open semi-open f file so there can be something for white here and for the player such as boarding this kind of small things is very important to conduct the attack because he's uh he likes to attack he likes to sacrifice and he needs he needs the proper positions for that all right queen e1 queen is going on g3 or on h4 uh queen is definitely going on the uh, king side um now e4 was played I really worry about black's position. I was thinking about a5 to be played really fast because now knight comes on h4. Knight will come on f5 if that's necessary to do. Or just just simple move like queen g3, double the rooks on f5. Uh, seems like not too much pieces, but the queens, rooks and the knight, it's, it's enough to uh, create serious threats. So here we have queen g3. and we might see also b3 move just in any case to stop any counterplay on the queen side guard a4 pawn and make sure that the rook is free to move on f file so white is thinking whenever those players are taking some time it means that they are calculating some crazy lines he goes with rook f3 
uh, he's getting ready to double the rooks. I wonder if he plays b3 first or he just goes right away rook f1. We're gonna figure that out very soon. And black plays f5. You know what? I we, we often say that it's not good to push the pawns wherever you are weak. And when somebody attacks you, the king, it's just not good to push the pawns. But I think in this case, it's 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 proper one. And it's just good not to wait for the opponent and just go ahead, open up the position, make some complications. This is blitz uh, game. It's not a classical game. And even if you weak something, for instance, now g6 square is extremely weak. Um, that might give you some chances to have some counter. Because now knight is active, um, e pawn is gone, uh, and uh, black can try to play knight f4 and start to activate the pieces in the center. Knight f4, in fact, is a very dangerous threat with knight e2 winning a queen. So queen g6 check. King, I uh, assume king should go on g uh, on h8. And now rook f1. Rook f1, maybe g3 just to avoid knight f4 move. Queen can also leave a g6 square just to try knight g6 move. We're gonna say that. One minute for Bortnik and uh, black has black has one minute and 40 seconds, so black has way more time. And the evaluation bar goes so down for uh for uh, white so this move is not good this move is not good and still the engine likes this position for black engine likes this position for black uh because so far black has some 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 ideas rook h rook f8 uh, to attack f5 pawn and knight g6 now is stopped as this knight will be simply captured if knight g6 knight takes g6 f takes g6 and the queen on g4 is hanging so for this reason h3 is such a useful move uh, to play rook f2 is also a very nice move just to cover the king so there will be no check after knight g6 now black is um Black is not forced to take this knight though. Black is not forced to take the knight. So he plays rook king g8. And white is now hoping to get into the end game. Yeah, that's that's a bit weird because white was the one who was attacking and something went really wrong. And just because black pushed f5 and tried to play really active, this paid off for black. Black denies to go into the end game, and White is now go going all in. Looks really scary position, um, for for Black because of this pawn chain. Um, but not so easy to to convert. Not so easy as Black also has some counterplay. Maybe this is a time to trade the queens. Maybe it's time to trade the queens. I'm starting to to um to worry about move like g5 and then f6. Both kings will be exposed, but um still uh those rooks are stronger on a file. G5, here we have it. The time situation is 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 equal and this gives white a winning chance, of course. This is this is a plan g6 and a checkmate here. Oh 20 seconds black hand figured out how to avoid that and it's, it's impossible to avoid that it's simply impossible to avoid that king f8 queen h8 just like that and now we can we're gonna have this check then white will capture the g7 pawn and yeah this is this is just winning position the most practical way to to play now e3 can be played to look for some counterplay. Yeah, so so um so interesting, so interesting game. Uh, how about rook f three? 
it feels like something really bad can happen to, to both sides like six seconds eight seconds that's not much of the time and the position is so complicated both kings are so weak um it was not time to flag <laughs> it was not time to flag here yeah it was not time to flag uh, like a difficulty to find a move maybe king c8 was a move there but that's the story of already the past the game is over and here we have winning position for Kirill Sivchenko and what what just happened wait what just happened ah <gasps> it was a mouse oh no mouse slip maybe it was not mouse slip and he thought that he could not stop the pawn we don't know that we don't know that but somehow somehow he still managed to to get the winning position this is so so winning position same color bishop um wow this engine gonna have a heart attack today in this game white can take this one i love the way how white brought the bishop on e7 to control g5 square and instead of one extra pawn and theoretical end game but has two extra pawn and winning end game so yeah those pawns are too far from each other so king cannot stop this bishop cannot stop this nicely played by uh kirill Suchenko. um and yeah i believe that was a sacrifice what do you guys think was that a sacrifice on uh, on c2 Maybe he just did not, she did not know how to stop those pawns coming and he decided just to play this one and to uh, to win this end game. Those pawns are on the um, dark squares and the bishop is also dark square bishop. So yeah, we don't know that. Let me check very quickly if uh, something else is going on. Two more games. Uh, let's go here. This seems to be uh, this seems to be winning for black, and the game will end soon. What you guys think in the chat? We're gonna win today's title Tuesday. Um, you can see now the um, players who have three out of three. There are a lot of them already. So after this game, I will quickly take a look. <laughs> black doesn't want to, to 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 give a stalemate and black was giving all the checks so this round has been ended and uh we do have um Elianov, uh now the leading the uh all the players with 100 percent i also see exotic princess sir asigurov uh we have seen many of his game at title tuesdays and going down there are a lot of players a lot of players with um three out of three so round four has just started and uh, this is the last round uh before uh before our first break players are going to have uh one break uh and then second break in after eight round uh so they're gonna have some time to uh get some drink uh, just refresh a little bit uh, and then to get ready uh, for the next round so here we have the game Hikaru uh, against um, Sheld and seems like they are trying to trade so many pieces uh, I like this position for white as black has uh, a little bit weird pawn structure uh, and now white simply t took I love that move just to take the knight on f6 double this pawns and to play this position with a little bit better position knight versus a bishop but a really bad pawn structure for black soon there's going to be a um, uh, isolated pawn here and black will try to stop that pawn coming forward for instance just to take here knight f3 uh, also guarding a a2 pawn is very important not to give up that pawn knight can come on d4 uh something like h3 and slowly 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 white can try to win this game 
Imagine being 2800 player and your opponent 400 points more. Yeah, that's weird. That's a weird feeling. Like 2800 player on chess.com is not easy to achieve. We all know that. We are all in that in that boat. <laughs> Struggling to gain some rating. Uh, and here we have a guy with 2800 plus and he's on the top guys and he's playing against 3200 player yeah not not a funny business so back to this uh game um what do we have here this looks quite a uh, standard position isolated pawn um weird pawn structure for black those pawns are weakness also double pawns we can consider as a weakness knight is good in this case uh, better than a bishop bishop just uh controls the uh, open space nothing more um and um white now can capture this pawn can yeah yeah the engine says yes okay let's see queen captures the pawn um and now white will simply take this queen back and will start to roll the pawns Well, this kind of positions like um, it's not easy to play in blitz because it's quite dry. You don't have much of the uh, uh, ideas, and you can't really complicate it. How can you complicate it? Like you can push f4, you can push d4. You're gonna just lose that one, and you're just waiting for your opponent to blunder something. Yeah. So white is going for d5 pawn now, and very likely white will manage to take that one. Rooks are off the board, queen can take on b5. Um, yeah. And the queen endgame is is yeah, not 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 nothing. Nothing there for black. It's winning for, for white. Queen goes on d8. Knight f3, just avoiding any counterplay with bishop h4 sacrifice. And now Oh, I just love this position for white. Look, this knight guards the king and everything on the king's side. Now the pawn d4 will be simply captured by probably with the pawn. And on the other hand, a pawn is really pushed too much. F4. Black is trying everything to complicate the position. Just black is just going all in. Uh, here we have a pin. Uh, black can't avoid the trade of queens as the bishop is hanging and here we have a resignation all right we do have another interesting games a lot of them so let me very quickly go to here um oh okay valentina gunina and um and 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 international master from ukraine we know her we know her guys if somebody can give me a hint in the chats that's gonna be just perfect so two very strong blitz players now um playing this match they have two out of two out of um three and this is fourth game who is uh, yeah just need more time to think i know her we all know her she has been several online tournaments and blitz tournaments. Yes, Julia Osmak, thank you so much. Reagan, thank you so, so, so much. It's Julia Osmak. So the point is that they know each other so well. They have played a lot of tournaments. Sometimes when you play online tournament, you don't know who's your opponent, but they know each other and they have played a lot of games before. Um, so what's happening here? We know that Valentina is a very sharp player. Um, and Julia is quite solid player, so that's gonna be a very interesting match. As you can see, knight f6, white wanted, white had some attempt to attack the king and start to uh, have very strong um, uh, play on the king side. Uh, but black managed to uh, capture two pawns, there's two extra pawns, although it seems like white is the one who is pushing uh, for initiative g5 was played the queen is hanging can queen come on uh d2 you can go anywhere else and white is thinking 30 seconds 
uh, black has only six seconds so um also time is just uh just just better for uh white and white she's not making move she goes with d queen d2 now queen d3 um black tries to pin uh the knight so if something gonna be changed it's just gonna be better for black all right white white is trying so so hard with f4 white is trying so hard rook g8 seems to be not very a uh, good move as now queen comes on a three and there's a checkmate oh <gasps> that was a checkmate no you could give up the pawn you could give up the pawn you can't give up your king oh right there was a tragic moment here for black uh we can go to the next game um which one is interesting this seems very interesting end game let's take a look at the end game so black is the one who's pushing a bishop and the three pawns is more than enough uh, to play against rook uh even bishop and um one pawn is enough to play against rook make a draw so here we had a beautiful check made by exotic princess uh let's take a look at this rook and game seems like uh curious of chenko is uh is out playing his countryman elianov pavel elianov and here we have a resignation uh so yeah white is about to queen but that's not enough as black can simply take this pawn and then push the uh connected pass pawn with the king it's very very strong all right was that the last game let me check really quickly now we have more games we do have more games and i'll choose wonderful time um what how many extra pieces knight and three extra pawns one is down so knight and two extra pawns and those everything is happening on the same side so i don't believe there's gonna be more dramas here and the king is cut it so um let's move to the next game how about this one so here white's king got checkmate it seems really active king but it's not always winning and this game has been in a draw all right um <gasps> oh no once in a while we need to have something like this <laughs> something like this when uh when white is making fun of black yeah this is so weird situation like sometimes you just you even suffer but you cannot rec oh no now he's giving all the pieces back do you think he will just king a7 is a checkmate he could play king a7 checkmate uh, but no he played all this all these fancy moves yeah okay okay it's good that you have the chance to play so fun uh, games uh this end game pawn end game is winning for white okay two games this was the one and this was the second so this means this means that um round four is down we do have now new leaders uh, um exotic princess is the one who is leading uh everybody 16 players are four out of four I'll take a very short break as the players are also taking break and I'll come back right before the start of the fifth round. Please don't go anywhere and um, uh, let's, let's keep the watching this very exciting Title Tuesday.
All right, the round five just has been started, so I'm back, and this is Title Tuesday. My name is Katie. If you just joined, and we're going to have a lot of rounds today, uh, and we're gonna have a new winners of the tournament, or all the new old winners. We don't know that yet. Uh, so we do have here on the board Hikaru with Black Priestess against Kpio. Kpio. Uh, 81. Uh, I wonder who is that. I believe that's a Polish player, Polish Queen Master. Um, and I, I, I bet, I bet to chat that it's Casper Puron. So let's watch this game. It's going to be very interesting. Uh, so here we have Queen D7, the latest move of Hikaru. Is he going to cast alongside and to play Bishop H3 and then to start the attack the king side? Is that what he wants to do? He can also do something like bishop e7 and castle short side. Um, so white is thinking, white is thinking. I like the idea of long castle and bishop h3. Yeah, cuts per pure. All right, that's 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 nice. So knight c3, long castle. Come on, we want to see long castle. We 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 need to see opposite castling here. Maybe h5 first, or maybe bishop h3 first, but king should go on the long castle. That's more exciting for us to see. Or bishop e7 and castle, that's uh, that's going to be sort of um, sort of position like uh, where black can try to play knight d4 and to centralize the pieces, but it's not fun. That's not fun. And here we have long castle. Perfect, perfect, perfect. It's going to be a very interesting game. I believe so. Um, white goes d4. I love this move. The pawn is hanging in 10 ways. But anyway, white goes for it because white knows Casper Pure and he's very, very strong grandmaster and two times uh, world champion in puzzle solving. Uh, he knows that that's the moment when he has to complicate the situation. Otherwise, if he allows Hikaru to play bishop h3 and h4, h5, h4, that's gonna be too late. So now knight b4 makes sense uh, to play, but first what goes with rook d1 to pin the pawn um, as the queen is hanging on d7. Bishop h3 was just anyway played. Bishop can go on h1 now or knight b5 is still an option. And, and yeah, here we have knight on b5. So after bishop takes on g2, uh, we might see knight e4 first. No, <laughs> that's too much. So king g2 was played here. White is going to capture d4 pawn. And after everything was just happened, the light square bishops are off, but white slowed down a little bit of black's attack and um, also traded a lot of pieces so trading pieces are it's very important when your opponent is attacking you Hikaru's success is to get moves from Kelly. absolutely you guys finally you fi you got it finally you got it yes um all right uh i'm i'm not happy with the bishop on f if if uh f8 this bishop should be uh should be developed one day uh, and I'm starting to like White's position as also the uh, engine gives like pass one for now. Uh, the threat is to take on c6 and after queen takes, queen takes and pawn takes, the rook on d8 will be hanging with the check and knight can move after that. So knight c6 is serious, serious, serious threat. Wow, it was hard to say. Serious threat. So bishop b7 can be played, but I'm sure black wants to find something better than just... Uh, just a move development here so he goes with knight d4 rook takes d4 so b5 knight was untouchable as the rook on d8 is still hanging thanks to this bishop and uh black is now black is trying to save the game um yes that's right that's right. So Queen F4 was not the best here according to the engine, but it's so so hard to guess the moves of the engine why engine gives the advantage. But seems like a normal move to me as uh this um queen 
starts to hit the king and the c7 pawn maybe at some point white will start to play on c file um knight d5 what what this is not good it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good how can we use this advantage here how can we use this advantage here queen f3 knight is hanging hikaru is having less than 20 seconds wow this is not often happening that he's struggling um on time so 97 white has simply very good position white is simply having a very good position i feel so bad for the bishop on f8 has it's just so bad he's just so bad he's uh, and the king is having such a big struggle um yeah maybe after all or long castle was not the best option with which we suggested to hikaru um so rook c6 <gasps> oh no oh no all right we're live on chess dot chess.com twitch channel so welcome everybody who just join the title tuesday this is the round five and something such a dramatic is just happening white decided to sacrifice an exchange and the king is exposed white is having is white going to repeat the moves and black decline that what's happening here finally the bishop is developed knight c6 and Black is just claiming that there is there is nothing, it's just one piece knight, knight moves around, I, you can checkmate me. But there will be surely something really bad happening to black. So check, bishop b6 maybe now and queen d5. <gasps> what? Oh no, it was repeated three times. No, 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 no. This is not how we do things, no. It was too many repetitions. How about this move here? And then this move. Was it enough to win? Oh no. And now bishop c5. Anyway, why well, I'm to judge. White had one second on the clock. So uh, we're not judging anyone. Let's move to uh, the uh, other game which is in progress. Here we have rook and the uh, bishop versus rook and the knight black has two extra pawns and um yeah this opponent game yeah it's not opponent game this this extra bishop now is simply winning uh so yeah something something bad happened here uh, let me get something interesting sigurov Ninety three was played. Black has, black has losing position for sure. Queen ha White has an extra queen, but still, um, so complicated, right? Black wants to to, uh, oh, oh my god, what's happening? Let's let's everybody watch. Let's everybody watch. So queen versus knight and the bishop and the pawn. This should be winning. This should be winning, but in the uh please a format like three plus two one second maybe it's not gonna be easy all right white can take the bishop no white can take the this pawn goes to here so it was guarding this and white will try to play uh, with the king a lot white just puts the queen uh far away and the computer shows that white has slightly better position just slightly better position so black managed uh to well find a uh, really best way to uh save the game so you off wow <clears throat> this 
this should end in a draw in a normal game, in a classical uh, game, uh, when both sides have time. But now we have Blitz with only one second increment and Black has uh, like nine seconds and uh, White has three seconds on the clock. I would be really scared if I were White not to blunder the um, fork. Black is trying to flag. Black is trying to flag white. Wow. And I like this move, queen queen a8, queen b8. And the draw was uh, not a agreed, but it was 131 moves. So they played really fast this, um, these games. And seems like uh, it was 50 moves rule. So round six just already started. So uh, let me choose the game. Um, do we have anything interesting happening? Maybe you can take a look at the leaders. And Turk Chess is one of the leaders. So we can just keep uh, watching this. He's playing against Bogdan. Uh, Ditch. Uh, and uh, Bishop d7. Queen takes b7. I would take this pawn too. I don't think it's a poison pawn. Um, and now really fast just go away with the queen and that's what white is doing queen d1 white just captured b7 pawn and pretends that nothing happened so white has an extra pawn queen a4 attacking the knight now at some point what has to start to develop the pieces a3 bishop e2 castle maybe first uh to develop the bishop but no this pawn is hanging a3 um sort of delays castle um but on the other hand night before might be the threat that white did dislike it so um okay we understand but now please develop the pieces all right e3 was played uh turk chess is uh bat batuham dashton uh quite strong quite strong and young uh green master from turkey um seems like to be very strong online just player two black managed to castle now white is two moves away to castle if white plays bishop e2 uh but um mm, you know these moves are very easy to 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 be played he's thinking maybe he's thinking about bishop b5 to pin the knight is that something that he can consider like for instance this move here knight is hanging black can play root b6 or black can play Bishop e4, uh, and then uh, white can can simply castle. I really want him to castle. All right, still thinking. That's one minute uh, difference already. Black has one minute edge on the time, so that's a lot. That's a lot, even if you have like slightly better position, or even if you have one extra pawn. It's gonna be a lot one minute. So he plays bishop b5 and castle here. Uh so rook b8. Black is going to play too fast. He's going to play just random moves and very fast moves. And white is thinking too much again. A c4 was played. Uh a6 uh and the bishop now is forced to to be uh to, um, traded. Uh why not to take take and push c5? Because rook takes c5 and in the end this is hanging. So this happened. This happened and black managed to get the pawn back. And black seems to have a very good position. Pair of bishop, very strong rooks. Now rook c2 makes sense uh, uh, to me as the rook on the second rank is extremely strong. Another rook can come on b2. All right. Rook, uh, rook b2 seems um seems to move uh, the move, but uh, black can try something else like c5 here, and yeah, black goes with c5 using this uh, diagonal and this pin. 
bishop e4. Oh, what? Can I take this one? Yeah, okay, if you take this one, then bishop e2 and the black will capture a3 pawn. If you take with the rook and black gives a check, you have rook c1. So there was a blunder. C5 um, was a blunder, what uh, black just played. Uh, and now black has to play really solid, like bishop f8 attacking this pawn. Activate the rook here or here. Let's see. Uh, bishop f8 attack the uh, rook, and now rook b1 makes sense 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 for me. So this is the move uh, I expect here to be played. Uh, very quickly, I'll take a look if something crazy happens in the other games. If uh, if you guys uh, look also uh, at chess.com events and uh, title Tuesday, just let me know if something interesting is happening. I see one very interesting uh, game, so maybe I will switch there. So this seems to be slightly better for white as extra pawn but pair of bishop is a um, big power in the end game so on um, this game i hope we can come back here but um this is the game uh which we have to take a look for sure because it seems like black sacrifice uh, exchange here for an attack and um black got something black definitely got something but not enough uh, and this says, says that uh, white has white has big advantage. White has huge advantage. And all the pieces are now falling apart, just like that. Queen takes h4 and king f2. Yeah, let's go. Let's go with the king. <laughs> no problem. Activate the king because. There is extra knight and the rook on the board, so why not to be such a brave man? Knight d5. Yeah, funny enough, the king is not even under the check. Um, so this seems quite quite safe for white. This seems quite safe for uh, for white. Maybe rook g7 now. Give up, give up the rook and start to uh, give some checks. Knight d5. And here we had a resignation. So um, black resigned here. Okay, uh, so another game. Mary uh, Arabice from Georgia against Kaisi from Ukraine. Uh, black is having here a um, very good position as those pawns are very strong and seems like there was a blunder. Seems like white just blundered the piece. And here we, ha we had a resignation. Uh, let me get something interesting for the last game. How about this end game? Black just managed to uh, capture d6 pawn and seems like um, black is back into the game early was very very bad position for for black white was pushing white had an extra pawn but uh for some reason this pawn is gone and now uh black can slowly start to activate the king for instance knight can go on f7 king d6 next move bishop can come on e6 knight goes on on c6 oh that's also very nice to attack a5 pawn uh, so yeah, knight c6, king can come here, the bishop can come here, so slowly black will come back.
and White also managed to activate the king in the center. They they seem to play like a standard chess, like quiet, improving the king's position. How about king e5, king f6, king g7 starts to play if white can start to, to collect the pawns on the king's side. I'm not sure about king c7, just to give that uh, opportunity. But on the other side, like white is calculating so, so long. White lost so much time after that move. Is white going to take the knight? Uh, yeah, let's see, let's see. Well, black knows that if uh, if nothing changes here, king will come on e5 and then on the king side and white will start to collect the pawn. So bishop c6 was played and now we have uh, bishops off the board. Um, yeah, this could happen earlier, this could happen earlier, but um, anyway, it's just happening right now and black pushed the g pawn king uh, g6 is now impossible because there is a check uh, so knight has to come back uh or from b3 to d4 and now capture on a5 but this allows black to activate the king and black can start to collect the kings on the queen side so black has here the advantage and the situation changed so so much and uh, so fast uh, there is also the um very very bad situation on time and black won the game all right the next uh game has the next round has already started so this was the uh, last game in the round six so after round seven after round seven we don't have after round six after round six we have only one uh, player with a uh, six out of six uh and then we have a lot of players like nine players with uh five and a half all right let's choose a game now and we can focus on that there are a few interesting matchups um mm -mm. which one should we choose let's choose hikaru against uh td uh, pantani a grandmaster from poland uh wow polish people has really uh weird names on chesscom uh so i really wonder who's uh this grandmaster at this time he's the leader He's the leader and Hikaru has five and a half. So this is leader's leader's game. So we can just keep watching this one. We have seen this already in Ru Lopez when uh, White opened up the uh, A file that was in the game of Fortnik. And uh, yeah, it didn't win so well for White. Let's see how this is going to go. Um, so what's happening? K Castle was played. Castle was played. Uh, from uh, black for now i don't think any of the side will open up the position white goes with rook a2 white wants to play rook a1 and then a b a b and to just enter on the seventh rank so black really quickly took the rook away from a file um but this allows white to get on a7 um yeah rook, will, rook is so good at a7 it's never bad to have rook on the seventh rank Another rook comes on the a file, and now the question is if black is going to fight on a file with rook a8 or not. That could be really weird, like to play first rook e1 and now rook e8. Instead, knight goes from d7 to f6. And uh, what's the idea of this move? This hits hits e4 pawn, so maybe h5. h5 can be. I like h5 here for uh, for two reasons h5 with the idea to push h4 if the knight uh, goes away or to play something like that bishop h6 and knight g4 to attack on e3 pawn so um and also it's not so easy to play with white here what needs to find uh, some ideas pavel yarats is the uh player with white pieces all right h5 here we have 
and h3 bishop goes anyway on a on h6 to attack e3 weakness knight can't go on g4 anymore because white played h3 uh but anyway yeah uh, when you have to play h3 and then king h1 it's not so good it's not so good uh actually um bishop goes on g8 g7 i wonder if white plays king g1 here no white goes with knight g5 attacking on f7 it's not hanging though um and now just just take it back on f3 and it's gonna be repetition oh it's gonna be repetition a second time and we might see also a draw here after bishop g7 mm -hmm. let's see uh no he's going he's going to play his, he went for uh trade the, um, the rooks on a file so soon black will be the one who will control a file and i like this idea very much why not to control uh the a file um queen f2 knight e5 can be uh can be a move if black plays queen a7 for instance or queen a5 so knight goes away just to guard everything in the center e5 is not hanging anymore and black's next move can be queen a6 or a5 just to get on a a file let's go queen a5 let's say queen c7 was played by um Haru. so in case if white takes on c4 black can take it with a queen and to attack on c uh three pawn that's gonna be um weakness on c3 queen goes back yeah, white knows that it's not so good position and lost the control over the A file. But um, in this situation, in this game, I think the main uh, as main factor will be the time. Main factor will be the time as white has less time here. Uh, it's going to be quite hard to maintain the, um, the everything all together, all the pieces together. Queen d8, sneaky move. Knight on h4 is hanging. Does in any case. Knight f6, attacking on e4. All right. Queen a2. Queen a2 makes sense. There's queen a1 and queen c3 check as well. So black is using the time. King g7 is possible here to play. Knight takes on e4. Yeah, why not to take knight on a pawn on e4? It's hanging. And to play that end game. Yeah, it's 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 good position. Now bishop takes on e3. Another pawn is gone and uh well there will be there will be check on the b1 and then check on on f4 to expose the uh, white king but instead of this hikaru goes with capturing on d4 and to create a pass pawn on c file wow well played well played and um, this means that we're gonna have new leader or leaders after this round uh what else can we see oh <gasps> what what's happening well in the game of valentina gunina you you always gonna have a lot of fun but i thought it was white who was winning this but look at this checkmate rook no it's not that checkmate but it's gonna be soon checkmate yeah queen here king uh goes on h4 and then queen can take with a check and then the king will be checkmated there but that was quite sneaky position wow. look at this white sacrificed um, a rook and black black just simply went for the white's king and here we had rook g1 wow yeah there was there was there was very interesting a uh, game um, unfortunately we missed that we could not see the whole game all right we can just focus this one this is uh, gm dimitri against gmm hover uh, from india 
emperor emperor Uh, so black has a pair of bishop and a very good attack on the uh, king's uh, queen side. Black can try to open up the um, b file and a file. Um, white also has some sort of play. No, white has not play on the king side, so this king is quite safe here, and it's only only black who is pushing uh, the um, forces. Queen g5 was played here. Queen c3. Well, rook c8 makes sense to develop the rook on c file. There's also some checks, can be also interesting, or just simple move like bishop takes the knight and then to push the pawn or even to take this pawn and we can get the king even more to open by opening the b file. Yeah, this can be played this, this, and rook c8, or rook c8 right away. Ooh, that's sneaky. Uh, rook can come on... Wait, this is not our game. This is... Can somebody please tell me what's going on? Because other games has been started. <gasps> this... Okay, he's not playing title Tuesday. He's not playing title to say because other games has just started round eight just started um all right um let's pretend that nothing happened and let's go to the round eight and uh, we will not be we will not be uh following um anymore grandmaster dimitri because i'm not sure if he's playing i'm not sure if he's playing He's just playing something else. All right, what we're gonna see here is this game. I don't know how the king got on on f8. That's um that's very interesting. Uh, so we can see it very. What's happening really? A3 was played by uh by Queen uh, Queen Jones and now. Oh, that's what I thought. Black wanted to castle and played king f8, the mouse leap, and this is so bad position. This is so bad position. That is a very bad position. So king king is exposed. The bishop c4 now. The checkmate is hanging on f7. So d5 was the only move to be to be played. Uh, black can still keep it go with knight d6 or queen d6. Try to play e5. Um, at some point, white sh black should try something like king f7, rook f8, and king g8 to make this sort of artificial castle. Um, And black can try to come back. Black can try to come back. Well, I really thought, I really thought when I saw it the first, at the beginning, that it's gonna be a uh, game over very soon. Seems uh, like not yet, although this game will be very interesting. Uh, white just castled on the long side and black just castled on the short side but it's artificial castle it took a lot of lot of lot of tempo, uh, tempos for for black to to castle uh and here we have the position i really wanted to switch to the to the leaders uh, game because the, those two players are having four out uh, four and a half out of uh, seven uh but this gets really interesting so let's remain on this board and let's check out how we are going to play when we have opposite castles uh with both both sides because i'm sure they 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 know the best how to do it so what black is doing now is black is trying to stop the attack on the king side by attacking the pawn on d4 and by getting this knight uh just sticking on this very important squares h5 and f4 uh so white wants to keep the bishops on the board plays bishop f1 uh, here but his next move is will be g3 to kick the knight uh, back. I did not really expect this was coming, a uh, queen trade, but anyway, g4 now wins wins uh, peace because knight on h5 is hanging. Knight has only one move to come on f6 and uh, 
white very quickly takes the knight on f4 so well spotted by white uh, and here we have the position with extra piece should not be very hard to convert for the uh, for the uh, English grandmaster so let's go to the next game so we have fur chess on YouTube Sigurov, Hikaru, Exotic Princess and Belt Rexter uh, as well as Valery Spiridov uh, and two more Shigalko and Harsha leaders so I'll choose one of those games and we can just focus on that yeah we're gonna we're gonna be focused on exotic princess and um David Hovel with black pieces Howitzer 13 uh so um you have uh the game g5 is such a weird move G5 is a weird move to play against Jabava. Uh, usually he likes to play like G4, or G5. Rook F3? <gasps> what a powerful move. And Jin is not really sure if it's a good move or a bad move. It's like going up and down. But we like it. We like it. Uh, this exposed the king pretty much. Now there is a check and White will try to capture this bishop. Um... King g6 seems to be a very nice move. There's no more check. And if white captures this, black will capture the knight on c7. So knight b5 was played here by exotic princess. Um, very, uh, so strange position, right? Rook is hanging, queen is hanging, and the king is in the center. But on the other hand, white has the back ring problem. Uh, so rook b1 was played, now bishop is hanging, bishop has to go back, it goes on e5. Yeah, the problem here for white is that white cannot free the rook from the first rank, and there was a blunder, that's a blunder, that's a blunder because of what? Rook c3? Ah yeah, rook c3 and the bishop is hanging on e3. Okay, if Hall couldn't find it, then it's okay not to find it. It's okay not to find uh, the win here. Three seconds for black. Uh, and I believe that white, white can survive here. And white can try to uh, push a little bit more. Knight c2 now will guard the pawn. Bishop will go on e7. No, it's not going there. Mm. Now the checkmate is a threat. So white just plays king g1 to activate the king. And white has extra pawn on a file. This should be winning. This should be um, quite easy to play. Rook goes on a6 and then tries to push the pawn. We might get into the uh, into the end game where uh, there is a draw, theoretical draw, if the bishops are off the board. Let's see. White is uh, white just trade the pawns. Um, that's very interesting strategy. That's quite interesting strategy. Well, if rooks are off the board, then white has chance to win. Uh, if bishops are off the board, then it's it's a draw. Uh, and if those pieces are still remaining at the board, then we have this situation. <laughs> so rook g7 was nice move. Rook g7, just come on, take me. And then if you take it, bishop c3 and uh, white will capture rook on uh, a1 and to have that uh, bishop end game. Or white can try to push more than in the rook end game. All right. White king gets really active. White king really gets active. And now uh, white can try to... <gasps> oh no, white can now checkmate. And black is the one who asks to the rook trade. And bishop e7 wins g5 pawn in the game. Wow, what a game. What a game. Varu Jabba managed to uh, win a very intense game against David Howell. Uh, 
Grandmaster Dimitri can't can't trick us anymore. He's playing, but we're not going to check it out as he's not playing in our uh, tournament. Let's see how Anachronic is doing. Um, one of the chess comp uh, streamer uh, is joining very often Title Tuesday, and this game did not went well for her. Uh, but I hope she's doing well. Uh, let's now check out someone else. Um, who is still playing? Mm, this game has been ended. How about this game? Also has been ended. All right. I think most of the game has been en ended. Uh, after this round, we're gonna have the um, little bit of rest. Okay. Um, I think we're not going anywhere soon as this game can last forever knight versus rook it's a draw um you should not bring your king uh, backwards it's always good to keep the king in the center and the knight close to it so you will not lose it so here <laughs> the king went in the in the corner um yeah it can be some positions where uh, black can try to win for instance, knight f5 would be a blunder because rook a8 uh, is winning. Oh, <gasps> rook d3, no, 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 no. Always keep the knight closer, to close to the king. No, we have to stick king and knight together with a glue. We have to glue them. Okay, so this game um, ended really badly for, uh, for white let's see what's happening here all right this is also a very interesting game uh queen versus rook and two pawns and a two pawn is too too much pushed now so whites cannot relax and give some chat checks because uh there is the past pawn just about to be queen and uh yeah white just just decided to uh repeat the moves and make a draw that's um reasonable result here and this game ended in a draw so that means that all the games has been ended and now we can take a break and i'll come back right before the uh next round eight uh, round and uh, nine round and we're gonna see very soon who will be the top players who will fight for the prizes so don't go anywhere i'll come back very very soon
we're back. This is Title Tuesday. I'm Katie, and we're having now around nine very interesting match Exotic Princess against Hikaru Nakamura. They have started the game, and here we had the first moves already. Hikaru went with Scandinavian defense. I didn't know if he was playing Scandinavian defense, but well, I don't know if 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 chat knows about it just 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 let me know but i'm sure that this is gonna be very interesting match two very um uh sharp blitz players are playing against each other so we're gonna be very much focused on this game and they are also the leaders alongside uh with fair chess on youtube uh so um let's see how this game gonna end uh, seems like white has already ended the development and black is uh, now thinking how to uh, how to castle and he decides to play bishop b4 now uh, he kind of likes to give up the bishop for the knights just to um just to break the pawn structure of the opponent uh and uh white plays bishop d2 white had to anyway develop the bishop and he decides not to allow him to uh, ruin the pawn structure and plays bishop d2 on the other hand this move i like it very much because for instance if black castles you can play a3 and kick the bishop back and then move the knight away and it's going to be very dangerous uh so black is um taking some time um i would i would personally play queen h5 here if i were uh, black uh just to get rid of this um diagonal to avoid the pin and then uh, to castle but this might cause additional problems with rook e5 attacking the queen so for this reasons uh for this reasons uh black was just um thinking or maybe i was not <laughs> i was not uh checking the moves all right so there was a castle in that position and instead of a3 which i suggested um white played rook queen g3 uh with the idea to play uh bishop h6 next move to just uh press g7 pawn uh and to start the attack on the uh on the king side so um which side would you choose uh guys in the in the chat i would prefer definitely white side because i like white's position here very active uh pieces some ideas knight is also super active here rook is ready to lift on the um third rank can be also on the fifth rank and he goes with h3 um yeah i don't know i really didn't expect this kind of um a move uh for now like h3 is useful move often uh but yeah that's that's the last move i could expect because i don't know what's his idea i could also uh, predict some like a3 here but not h3 definitely we're gonna see black black developed all the pieces has no weakness for now like not clear weakness uh, but seem it doesn't feel so good for black um yeah so yeah just to take on the knight to give the bishop and trade as much peace as possible now knight e4 might be a uh, black's idea to play in case of in case of uh, queen f3 there can be another knight coming on f6 to guard a friend and avoid a, uh pawn uh drop on f7 so for this reason white just played queen f4 to avoid knight e4 coming i still like white's position here but somehow black is trying to to hold it uh and um the, this looks this looks better than the previous position for 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 black for sure All right, c5. That's what we wanted to see. Some complications, something very interesting. And here we have c5. Uh, Black is trying to open up the center. How about just to take it and then uh, guard this bishop or move this bishop away and just to have an open uh, diagonal. We can do this uh, same thing with rook d1. This is even better. If Black takes, now we take with the bishop and white pieces are more active and they are more connected so white is thinking white is taking some more time and in the end captured on c5 i'm not a big fan of this move because in the end this pawn might be hanging 
queen g3 was played. This queen g3 is under attack of knight d5, and the bishop and the pawn is still hanging. Yeah, still hanging. I wonder what was uh, here Jabawa's idea. He wants to play bishop d2 to get bishop on h6, definitely. And right now, g6 possibility here. First and second possibility is knight h5. So queens are off the board, bishop was hanging, white has to take this uh, bishop back on d2. And uh, after all, black has an extra pawn. Black has an extra pawn. And black is the one who is now pushing uh, for a win. The time is more or less similar. Knight b6. Some trades. Yeah, those knights... Um, Sometimes they're very good, but sometimes they're just fighting this same square, so. Let's see. F4. Wow, that's that's beautiful. I like this move. He will bring another knight on d5, and then he will move this knight away. <gasps> is this a, Is this gonna be trapped? That's, that was so scary. That was so scary situation. And um, here we have here we have the position where um, things change so much. White got in a pawn. Uh, Black still has very active pieces, but um, I would not be surprised if this ends in a drum. And um, in a second, a white managed to bring the king on the queen side to support the pawn. That's a very, very nice idea. Um, and slowly, white can start to push the pawn on b file. For instance, yeah, bishop c3 now. King here and here. King a3, king a4. Or just simply to push b4. Okay, that's a strange move. That gives some chances for black because this pawn can get really strong. Wow. Knight c4 is a, tar is a threat. And white cannot stop the pawn. White cannot stop the pawn. White has to sacrifice the rook. All right. Oh. Black has an extra queen. This should be uh, this should be easily winning, but yeah, there was impossible to stop the pawn. And here we have the position with a knight and two pawns for a rook. So yeah, black is still the one who is pushing. Third pawn is gone. I would I would not really take in that pawn because there is some checks, and I would be afraid of that mute checks. Uh, but they are playing so fast, I can't really, I can't really follow it. I can't really follow it. Let's just simply watch. So white has a queen in the rook, and black has knight and three pawns. Uh, the engine says that it's winning for black, and it's uh, equal, it's winning for black. So uh, there is some something strange happening here. A lot of um, fast moves, they are playing on the seconds. King g5, king is going to help the pawn. Knight c4, oof, knight wins uh, rook. And uh, white decided not to take the knight back, but instead to take the pawn. And we have a resignation sooner. Yeah, white just flagged here. So that was quite a crazy game. And um, yeah, white definitely had very good position. White definitely had very good position. So uh, this round, uh, was very important for Hikaru as he is now a sole leader with eight and a half points. Um, so let's check out if we do have anything else in progress. I see only one last game, and that's also the uh, it's also gone. So um, so seems like uh, fur on YouTube. 
Andraken, I think that's Andraken, also uh, also did not win, so he made a draw. And we, we do have Hazard ba Babazada uh, with 8 points. Those are top 3 players who are going definitely to fight for the uh, for the title. So we're going to be focused on this game. This is the leaders game, Hikaru against Andraken. And here we have French defense. All the French defense players in the chat, chat make some noises. Uh, I believe there are a lot, a lot of the French defense players and a lot who don't play French defense uh, for this bishop, uh, which was now developed by, uh, by Black. Knight to six, queen c5 stops uh, black from castling. And queen e7, perfect. Black is going to anyway castle. If if you take the queen, you will take the, with the king and then rooks will be connected. So that's black's idea here, not to be afraid to, uh, to lose the right to castle. And the game has been agreed on a draw on move 16. All right, that makes us to uh, go to the other game, and I suggest to go to the game of Hazar Bas Babasada. Uh, let's see, he's one of our um, our leader, and he's playing against uh, Bogdan uh, Diac. And here we have the position: the pawn is pushed d three. Looks um, uh, looks weird to have this pawn push so much. It can be weakness, it can be strength, but I think in this case it can be weakness because uh, it doesn't really have any target. And on the other hand, white is pushing on the uh, king side. White can white can double the rooks and then open up the f uh, file and they uh, then starts to do some sacrifices. There's also some nice ideas with 96 uh, piece sacrifice to get very strong pawn chain just imagine e6 d5 c4 b3 a2 pawn chain and then to keep the uh attack going um yeah rook, rook f3 and rook f1 makes sense here for me let's see what white gonna play If black managed to win a game and gets half full point one point, uh, that's gonna make him um, a leader, uh, sharing first second places with Hikaru. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see if he's able to win this uh, the game. And white played knight g five to f three. Is he going to get this knight on d four, or what's his idea? I think he's going to get the knight on d4. Or he just he just avoids some things like knight d5 sacrifices as the knight on g5 was not protected. Black is, Black is thinking here, uh, it's not easy position, all the pieces are still on the board. Um, we don't have any piece straight, right? All the pieces are still on the board. Uh, so, um, knight g4, knight is hoping to get on f2. Uh, if knight gets on f2, then knight can another knight can come on e4. And two knights in the center on the king side might cause some, some problems. Less than a minute on the clock for white, and black has a little bit more time on the clock. 
Knight F2 was played. Rook is hanging. White is now thinking where to bring the rook. I think I think this makes sense to get the rook on C1 and then on C3 to hit this pawn. Um, White is losing a lot of time. Is he considering something like take take and then take here and to play without an exchange? It's also a possibility. 20 seconds he has to make a move and he played rook c1 all right i oh, i thought that i thought that he disconnected um but he played rook c1 now and well 94 it's not so good as e3 pawn is hanging so uh black cannot play that that fast rook c8 was played with either to play queen e4 next move and after a queen trade this c7 pawn is not hanging anymore uh so rook c3 white simply ignores that and white wants to get so much this pawn uh rook e8 is the move that i expect to be played knight c2 in the end white will still win this pawn i guess because if after knight g4 there is h3 and this knight will be kicked from g4 and black cannot cannot save the pawn it's, it's too much to to push the pawn so fast and so so forward. Let's see, knight d seven attacking on f six and knight g four. Right, knight c seven now. This pawn can be captured. d6 is hanging yeah this when one pawn is down then the other pawns are also hanging so knight has to go very passive on e8 and uh how about f5 here f5 looks good yeah this game got very complicated this game got more complicated that um i could imagine uh, black somehow managed to come back white has less time on the clock and all the pieces just disappeared all right so white has an extra bishop uh for a pawn there is a little bit of the technique required not too much i suppose and uh, white will manage to win this game Just to take this uh, pawn, bishop b5, bishop a4, the pawn is gone, and then white will slowly push the pawn. Well, this is this is the blitz game, and anything had happened, and of course they are still playing and still trying to keep it go but we have a result here and um yeah Kazar did not manage to join the uh leader Hikaru uh, so here we have oh wow nicely played by Valentina Gunina this uh, opponent game oh that's so nice that's so nice that is so nice she just out outplayed Anton Danchenko uh quite strong Green master from Russia and here we had a position with double pawns and king uh, h4 if white plays king uh, f4 that's a stalemate if white plays g3 king g5 is a draw but here only move which wins the game is g5 and this is theoretical game end game and Valentina surely knew it and she won a very important game let's get into this game curious Sevchenko against champ 2005 and white has an extra exchange however b pawn is very strong already pushed on b2 and knight guards this pawn uh, but yeah we cannot convince the engine that's that's enough <laughs> we can't and this was um checkmate in just two moves and here we have resignation is that the last game for this round uh yeah no okay we have one last game here uh queen and the bishop extra this game gonna end soon 
and well the game has been ended uh the next round will start uh soon the last round uh and here i have the games already so we're definitely going to check out the game of hikaru uh let me check who is he playing against he's playing against uh bogdan Deach with black pieces uh so uh as you can see uh hikaru is the one who has nine out of ten the only player uh, and then we have um several players five players with eight and a half uh, so here we have the uh theoretical position where a very well known uh Rui lopez uh sideline and um seems to be a quite drawish to me but well anything can happen anything can happen white has an isolated pawn on d4 um but that's not a big deal as white can easily manage to push this pawn uh, and get rid of it Hikaru plays the way like he wants to make a draw. Draw might be enough for him, but he still goes for some uh some lines when the opponent don't play properly, he can he can still win. He can still win the game. A5. Well when you have a isolated pawn, it's always good to start some uh king side attack. How about bishop c2 rook h5? starts to expose the king side another idea is just to push d5 however i'm not very sure about this move as this, there is a pin and uh, this bishop can be kicked and the pawn that can be captured later on a3 was played so white wants to keep this bishop on this diagonal to target f7 pawn. Hmm. That's interesting. White is uh, white is thinking how to maybe h4, h5. I really wants to have want to have some 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 attack here on the side. Bogdan is also doing great. Eight and a half. He has a chance to get top four. We have prices for top four. Queen c3 was played. Queen c3. That means that he wants to push d5 next move and he just wanted to get rid of this pin on d file. Rook eight. Like it's trying to trade the uh trade the pieces while in the isolated pawn it's always good to trade as much pieces as possible so then you can easily target the weakness and you can also create another weakness. It can be also B2 pawn or any other pawn in white's camp. Queen f3 was played. So if you take on e5, first white will take on f7 and then take on e5. So uh, this is this is a target and this is a threat now. Black has to be really careful here. Maybe rook, rook goes back. This is an option. Because bishop e6 is a move, but in that case, black will also have uh, weakness on e6 and on c6. There is also a move like queen g6, but I don't really like to get queen so busy in in guarding f7 weakness but if you go with rook on f8 then was rook e6 7 move so after all these calculations Hikaru decided to go with uh, bishop e6 and to trade rook and then in any case uh, to get in the end game where uh, there's very few chances to lose a game Rook attacks the queen. Queen can come on uh, e4, targeting this pawn, and king h8 here. 
could be played just to avoid to have any check. Instead he goes with rook f4. I like this move more because it like forces white to uh, make uh, some decisions. Rook d4 now check and then rook d2 to attack the both pawns and to win one of those pawns. White has an extra pawn um, but uh, black is just going to take back one. And it's going to be definitely b2. If black has an option which pawn to take, it's going to be definitely b2 to then target e3 pawn. Oh. Uh, okay, b3. S strange looking move, but seems to be the one which um, doesn't very much complicate the position. So rook c3 now, if black pushes b2, then rook comes on b3 and will take the b5 pawn. Uh, if rook goes on b2, then white will try to uh, to activate the king or even target b5 pawn. Let's see how white will gonna decide. Oh, that's actually bad. That's actually bad. I didn't know if, if that was so bad move. The engine simply dislikes that. It gives minus uh, minus three. What's the reason if I take I take and go here? It's B four. Oh, all right. So black forces white to have a pawn on B five, and then rook cannot come here. No, 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 no. A four seems to be like the only move here. And black can at least like keep both both pawns on the board, like playing rook a2 he goes with rook c2 and rook b5 now it's fine rook c4 oh god what's happening here b2 a6 b1 a7 i don't understand what's really happening first check first should be first should be given check yeah Oh no, you're gonna here we're gonna have a resignation. So the engine was still okay in this uh, position because uh, there was check first and now to push this one. So to control the eighth rank and then to push the pawn to go. So that's why engine was giving uh, just small advantage for black. But instead in the game it was opposite. First the push was pawn was pushed and then. Um, we, we have seen this uh, heartbreaking loss for white. So that means that, um, that means uh, that we're gonna have very soon this uh, tournament ending before, before all the games end, let me very quickly go to the one of the game. Um, let me choose the one. This looks not so interesting. How about this one looks very complicated, but winning for white. So um, after all, this means that Higari is, is the champion of this title Tuesday with 10 points out of 11. And I don't believe that anyone else can catch him. Uh, so uh, the final results will be uh, will be soon, right after the end of the a last game for this round so we're gonna just wait for that um all right this game will also um end soon as black has an extra queen last three games in progress so uh here we have extra <laughs> what's happening oh there was a draw there was a draw look uh so just take here and take here is a draw uh so instead of this rook went on d1 and this gave white still a chance to uh to play for a win and it's clearly a winning position but white has uh, two seconds as well as flag so uh quite quite uh interesting position who is free chess on youtube that's andre kin um as far as i know 
<clears throat> and yeah, okay, this is gonna be a uh, soon game over. Uh, the game of Yachi, uh, Yatsuki against Valentina ended. And this seems interesting uh, end game. White is going to give some checks. Uh, Black is uh, very uh, dangerous with the pawn in the knight. So rook g8 was played to hit the g3 pawn. If you push the pawn, white will for sure capture this pawn. Um, rook g3 was impossible. Black is so tricky. Black is so tricky. Black is trying all the possible way. And yeah, this is already a risk free position. Uh, I think rook e3 was a very nice move there to try to win the knight. Uh, yeah, black should not try too much. This might not end uh, well. Knight c1, beautifully found uh, by black. And this is uh, the over. This is the over. So here we have the three winners of the uh, of the title to stay for today. So Hikaru with uh, ten out of eleven. Uh, for chess on YouTube, that's Andrekin uh, from Russia. Uh, he has nine and a half, and he shared the uh, second third place uh, with Yaspom. That's Martinez, according to our uh, lovely chat. Uh, who knows always everything uh, so and we do have also the price for the fourth place um, I will not really read it out because there is um, I'm not sure if this is the end already if everything was calculated uh, and we do have female price and we do have best streamer price as well uh, so there was there was so tense there was so tense tournament right um, um, a lot of blunders we have seen a lot of also beautifully played uh games and some some heartbreaking losses too um and the thing is thing is that um yeah he got one another he got one another title tuesday that's not a surprise for um many of us i'm sure with that uh we have seen also van Draken and martinez very close um uh and very often into the leaders so that means that uh, they are playing a lot of online chess and they're quite good at this. So you guys can also uh, can play everyday chess, try to solve as much puzzles as possible. That really helps you to play Blitz. Uh, so once again, very good information for everyone, for chess players uh, from around the world. We do have from February 1st, two title Tuesday in one day. So uh, also chess players have a chance to win two um titles or two prizes in one day and one event will start earlier in the morning and then the other event will start later so this is the time uh time of suitable for americans for europeans and for indian players and the prize fund will be five thousand dollars per week which will be divided into two tournaments so that's the great news for um for title tuesday uh spectators and the fans as well because um we're gonna have more tournaments of course uh and don't forget to uh follow the uh channel follow uh chess.com twitch and youtube channel and don't forget to train chess every day play as much as you can and uh solve as much puzzles as you can so my name is Katie Tazalashvili I am a grand woman grandmaster woman grandmaster if I say grandmaster people will complain about it so I'm a woman grandmaster uh, from Georgia and it was a pleasure to be here and thank you very much for everyone uh, in the chat who was very helpful who was very good company uh, I'm also streaming on my channel and here down you can see uh, you can see uh, the address of my Twitch channel. In fact, we're going to hang out a little bit today after party. That's what we usually do. Uh, and you can join us. And don't forget that from February 1st, 
we're gonna have double fun so i guess it's it's uh that's it for for me today and thank you everyone um in the chat um for um been with me and been very nice to me and uh, congratulations to the prize winners and everyone who played really well so we will meet each other very soon and uh, have a good day everyone bye bye